Hello, Marauder. I'm filling in for Mr. Newell today. I'm Thunder, the talking dog. Today, we'll learn our class section. Sorry, I don't have very good eye contact, but we'll learn all about the very last section, and tomorrow, we'll have our test on polar graphs. All right, today we're going to learn about section 6.5, complex numbers in polar form. We won't do Demov's theorem, we're just going to do the basics because to learn this entire section would take like an hour-long video that nobody wants to, to do, and each question actually becomes like a project, so it's just a little too much to do for like an online learning. But let's learn the basics of what is a complex number in polar form. Okay, so you may remember complex numbers have this form A plus BI. Where, what do you mean A plus BI? Well, let me put a number here like four plus three I, where four is a real number and this three is the imaginary number, the imaginary part. Together, it's called a complex number. And sometimes people use the letter Z to refer to it, you know, because we had X and Y already, so why don't we use Z? And to put this on a piece of graph paper, now this is regular graph paper, but instead of x and y, we just think of this part as the x and this part as the y. So just think of this as 4 and 3. So instead of this being x, we have this be the real. And instead of this being y, we have this be the imaginary. So if somebody says 4 plus 3i, you just go over 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the 4. And then you go to 3i. One, two, three. This would be three i, and put the dot. So that's the point four plus three i. So just think of this four comma three. Pretty easy. So here's one more. How about I do uh, negative one plus five i? Okay. Let's call him z also. Negative one plus five i. So you would go negative one. And then up five. One, two, three, four, five. Negative one, up five, and put your dot. So there's negative one plus five i. Just think of that as the x and that as the y. Okay, so one of the things we'll do here, we'll do one of the simplest things, the absolute value of a complex number. Okay, so let's go back and look at our our Point. So here's like, remember, z, here's a, a complex number, 3 plus 4i, and I plotted it over 3, up 4, and they say, okay, could you find the absolute value of it? In other words, what is the absolute value? Remember those bars, absolute value? Sometimes people just put it over here, absolute value. Well, I remember the absolute value is what? Absolute value is the distance from zero. Remember, absolute value, absolute value is the distance from zero, but how, do you, how far is this from zero? Well, actually, it's not too complicated. Zero is right here in the middle. So you just gotta figure out, well, how far away is that? Well, it's just the Pythagorean theorem. You could say, how much does it go over? Three. How much does it go up? Four. So we're just gonna do a little Pythagorean theorem to find this right here, here's Z. We'll put a little absolute value bars on it. So we're just going to go 3 squared plus 4 squared and take the square root. So 9 plus 16, square root of 25, which is 5. So the absolute value is 5. So in the book, that's why you see this little rule here in this box. It says if you want to know the absolute value, the distance from 0 of some complex number A and B I, the absolute value, sometimes we'll just put over the z here, but here's what you actually do. a squared plus b squared square root. So it's actually just a three, four, five. Here it is in the book. There's the three, there's the four. And they did their work over here. They just get, okay, we'll just do three squared plus four squared and say five. So the distance is five. Like if I gave you this one, negative minus, negative one minus two i, which they drew over here, back one down two. Here is here, back one, down two. They go, what's its distance? And once again, they just go negative one squared, which turns positive, negative two squared, negative two squared, 
four. One plus four is five, but square root of five. Oh, it's radical five. So that's pretty simple. So that's how you do absolute value. Just find the distance from zero with Pythagorean theorem. Uh, the other thing we'll do, we'll just do one other thing that's not too complicated. Let's do the polar form of a complex number. Polar form, in other words, no X's or Y's, or in this case, no A's and B's. Could you write in polar form? In other words, could you use R's and thetas instead of X, Y, or A and B? Do an R and theta. It looks a little complicated, but it's actually not hard to do. We won't go into anything else in here. But let's see, we can do this. Polar form of a complex number. Okay, so the one other thing we'll do in section 6.5 is the polar form of this imaginary number, of this complex number. And it's got this funny thing. So we want to remove any A or B and just use R's and thetas. It looks a little funny. Here's what we need to do. We need to find R. R is the radius. What was the radius? Actually, the radius is just the absolute value. What was this distance? This was three. This was four. We're trying to put this in polar form. In other words, we're trying to imagine that we had polar graph paper on here like this. See, like polar graph paper. So what was the radius? We already did it over here. We're just going to use that five again. So find the radius, which is just the absolute value, which is just the same as this distance. It's all the same. So the hypotenuse, the radius, or the absolute value are all five. So you're going to put five, and then you're going to write cosine of theta. What is the angle? So we now we need to find this angle. So what direction is it? Is it 90 degrees? 45 degrees? Maybe? No. I know what we can do. Let's do tangent. The tangent of theta is the opposite. We could, we could even could use sine or cosine, but let's use tangent. The opposite, four over three. Okay, we've got the, the sides. We don't know the angles. So remember, we used second, do the second of this. So this is where you pull your calculator out and go uh, second tangent, so it has a little inverse thing, 4 over 3, 4 divided by 3, mine's in degrees, and it says 53.1 degrees. Let's just call it 53 degrees. So this angle, you know, we were guessing 45, but it's not exactly in the middle, is it, if it's 3 and 4? 53 degrees. So I, there's an I right here for the imaginary sign, and once again, just put 53 degrees. And you're done. That's it. Don't do anything else. But you got the polar form of the rectangular coordinate. And we could go backwards, but I'm not going to have you go backwards. There are things in this section get a lot more complicated that we wouldn't go into because it would take us far too much time, like multiplying them together. Like, could you multiply a polar times another polar? Could you divide a polar by a polar? They've got like quotients dividing, and then they've got you factoring and taking powers and this thing called the Marx theorem. So unfortunately, the problems can become kind of a project. They're kind of cool. If we were in class, we would do this, but uh, online, no, I'm not going to have you try that. So there it is. Let's give you some review questions in the next video to get ready for Friday's test.